Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, words to my brethren out there in the world. Hope you got, hope wherever you're at, that you're doing okay. And we're gonna talk boxing, the cash cow of boxing, or I should say, the cash cow of the YTBC. It's here to talk boxing, and we're gonna talk about Gennady Golovkin, Canelo Alvarez. I haven't talked about this topic in quite some time. There's really been no need to. I don't really, I haven't really wanted to, and I'm really just kind of sick of this whole matchup. I mean, I thought Golovkin won the first fight, but th there's relevant news going on to it now, so we're going to talk about it. Uh, Eric Gomez, the president of Golden Boy Promotions, I believe the president, right? Is he the president? Yeah, oh no. Yeah, where president, where he, Eric, Eric Gomez of Golden Boy Promotions, he's pretty much saying that um, if Gennady Golovkin and Tom Loeffler are bluffing that th this, this negotiation for the rematch is not going to work, and if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, it was reported by Loeffler himself in the media this week that Triple G wants a 50-50 split for a rematch with Canelo. Um, I believe last year he got around 70-30 or 65-30. He took he took short money to fight Canelo last year. So let me say this, man. Let me say this, okay? 50-50 is more than a fair offer. It's more than it's more than it's more than fair for the rematch. And I'll tell you why. Um Canelo is considered the loser of the first fight by the majority of people, not just boxing experts, but boxing fans, boxing experts. Public perception is that Gennady Glovkin won the first fight and Canelo was lucky to get out of there with a draw. That's public perception for the, mo for the, for the majority of people. That's public perception. That's number one. More importantly, Canelo's reputation has been very, very hindered by the clamuterol test, his uh, initial reluctancy to enroll in uh, VADA testing, and things of that nature. So people, his his legacy is tarnished. For 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 good, his legacy is tarnished, and people are now looking at Canelo in the same high view as they used to. And, and as a byproduct of that, Golovkin had to take short short money again to stay to, to keep himself busy. He fought on Cinco de Mayo against a, a lesser opponent on free HBO, and he did that for the fans. Like honestly, he did that for the like really. He did that for the, he could have easily just said no, there's no fight, but he wanted to make the fight happen. He had most of the training, so he still rewarded. The fans with a fight and stopped Vaughn's Matarosa in two round in two rounds. So, um, Golovkin has went through a lot. Golovkin has went through quite a lot it, because of the way Canelo has handled the whole Clemuterol thing and testing for Clemuterol and and then refusing to uh, enroll in, in Vada drug testing initially. He eventually decided to enroll, but the initial reluctance to enroll just raises a big eyebrow from a lot of people in the boxing world. Um, so. 50% is more and more than fair. And, and when you consider that, he's still undefeated, he's still a champion, you didn't beat him, and you failed a drug test. If anything, in, in a fair world where boxing promoters like Eric Gomez and, Go and Oscar De La Hoya don't have their heads so far off their ass that they can't see reality, Golovkin will be the A-side, but he's not the A-side in terms of drawing power. Canelo has a Mexican fan base behind him, but Golovkin has all the other stuff. Outside of the Mexican fan base, Golovkin has all the other stuff behind him. So... Let's prep, let, 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 before we get into the course, let's just say that. Let, let's get that out the way. Gomez stated the following. He said, I quote, if they're bluffing, it's not going to work. We're not going to go for it. As of right now, it's off. I'm hoping we can make the fight. But Thursday, I felt like a, I felt like it was a deal killer. So it is what it is, man. Um, here's what he said about Gomez also went on by saying this. Uh, and if he loses to Canelo, he might retire. So what's he going to do? He's going to fight a, bu a, bu fight a bunch of guys like Vons and ride off into the sunset. So basically what, what Bergoma is saying is like, look, bro, you can't fight anybody else but Canelo. He's trying to paint it out that way. But reality is like Golovkin could, could, could do a whole lot more than just fight Canelo. I mean, he can go fight Saunders for Undisputed. He can fight Darian Vincenco, who I know is mandatory. He could fight uh, Jermon Charlo, who a lot of people want to see fight. And, Golov and, and I know Charles, we call him Golovkin now. Golovkin has acknowledged how I'll say we can talk about that after the Vaughn's fight. So personally, like personally, I would love to see the negotiations for this fight fall apart. I honestly would. Because of the fact that you already know that Canelo, if Gennady Golovkin doesn't knock out Canelo and it's in Vegas again, he's not going to get a fair shake on the cards. So I look at him as the, the winner of the fight. You know, he still has his belt. He didn't lose. You know, a draw is not a loss for the champion. So um, move on. Punish Canelo. Don't don't even get the opportunity to get another payday off you. And I say, if you want to really solidify that middleweight legacy, you know, you fight a guy like Darian Vincenco, 
you fight a guy like um, a Charlo, you fight a guy like a Saunders, potentially for Undisputed. And um, I think you could do a lot more for your own legacy uh, by doing that than fighting Canelo, just just honestly, um, because you're not going to get a fish in the scorecard. And all that's going to happen is you're not going to knock him out. You're, um, he's going to go, he's going to get to the scorecards, and you will get robbed of the scorecards, and you will have a very big fat L that you don't deserve on your record. So if I'm GGG and I'm Tom Lawford, I'm I'm running away from the negotiation with Canelo. Um, I understand boxing is business. I understand that you know the goal of boxing is to not just have legacy, but but, but make money. But I mean, there, there's a fine line between you know good business acumen and and just chasing chasing you know chasing your tail. You know, what the, what, the, what what Golovkin and Lafa are doing if they decide to go through with the Canelo negotiations and even and if they decide to concede later on, they're chasing their tail. They want to get 50-50 and they're going to want a fair shake. Now, if you get 50-50, trust and believe you're going to get less of a fair shake. If Canelo concedes and he gives you 50-50, you're getting less of a fair shake. You're going to have Bob Bennett and the Nevada Commission more in cahoots with Canelo than ever before. So I'm just, I'm giving a fair warning to Golovkin and Loeffler. Move on. The fight happened. It was a fun fight. But it's it's time to move on, man. It's time to move on, and it's time to explore greener pastures. I, I think a fight with Jamal Charlo will be really great for the fans. Um, a lot of people are high on this kid, Charlo. A lot of people, obviously, you know, Golovkin's a great fighter. So that'd be a great fight. You know, Saunders can fight with Undisputed. That could be a fight you could do in the U.K. again. Um, that'd be fun. Or maybe Eddie Hearn could put it on the zone. You know, we don't know. Well, not Eddie Hearn. Frank Warren's with freaking um, <laughs> Billy Joe Saunders. But, you know, it could be it could be a, it could be a thing out there in the U.K. So why not explore those options? Maybe Derry Ivanchenko, Golovkin could fight a guy who, you know, is also an Eastern European. And maybe he can go do that a hometown fight in Kazakhstan. You know, there's options there for Golovkin outside Canelo. I just hope Loeffler and, and K2 Promotions – they do their due diligence and they go and and, and they fight and, and, and they explore those options and not make Canelo a priority because it's not going to work out well for them. So that's my take. You guys can give me yours. I don't think it's a good idea for the love kids to pursue a Canelo rematch. You know, I just don't. I don't think it's smart. I don't think it's you know very wise, honestly. So yeah, that's just my take on the whole situation. Um, it all. It is also worth noting. Okay, it is also worth noting. And this is, a, this is an immediate red flag to me, okay? Um, it was reported also that um, so, uh, Mauricio Suleiman, he's asking Gennady Golovkin to sign a contract for a Canelo rematch. I mean, I'm going to pull the quotes up in front of you. Um, here's what Suleiman to, told ESPN reporters about signing a contract for uh, a, a Canelo rematch. He said, I quote, If your interest is to show that you are the best, that you are a champion and will be Canelo, you have everything ready you have everything ready to sign and get into the ring on on September 15th. That was rec- recommendation I gave you. Golovkin is asking for modification modification of an agreement that was to fight in May. My feeling is that he is sacrificing the weights for a few cents. If the fight is done, he'll have to go with Jamal Charlo. So, Gennady wants a fair decision due to the cancellation of the fight on May 5th and the success of the first show last September. So... But yeah, basically, Suleiman is just trying to get Gennady to re- uh, agree to a fight with Canelo. He thinks that's the route he needs to go. Um, and that, to me, that's a red flag because Canelo is in cahoots with the WBC. We know this. We know he's in bed with them. Um, and but what what what, I, what what one thing I did like he said though that he, he did say that if he doesn't fight Canelo, that he'll have to go fight Jamal Charles. So if that if that is the case, the negotiations do fall apart. I hope that Suleiman holds true to his word because we do know that the WBC can be a little, you know, flimsy with things they say. They don't really, oh, they, they don't have to let let the, let the yes be the yes and the no be the no all the time. So, um, interesting situation. Uh, Gennady wants fifty percent. I think that's fair. Uh, Suleiman wants the fight to happen. I don't really care for Gennady Golovkin. Can I love you with you? That ship has sailed for me. I think I think Gennady has so many more other options that could do more for his career. More for his, I think he'll have a lot more fun too. He'll actually like boxing because it seemed like he didn't really enjoy the Canelo fight because it was, you know, the negotiations and how long he had to wait. I feel like if he had a hometown fight in Kazakhstan with Derry Vincenko or, or or maybe a fight here in America with a Jamal Charlo or a fight for Undisputed, I believe that they'll, have, they'll just enjoy it more. And I think if you're Gennady, you should be looking for legacy and enjoyment. And I think the money will follow suit. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. 
take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every video, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm Jessica from Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys.